Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY23 earnings conference call of Tanla Platforms Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Ritu Mehta from Tanla. Thank you and over to you. Hello everyone. I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. On behalf of everyone at Tanla, welcome to our Q4 earnings call. Joining with us today are Uday Reddy, Chairman and CEO, Deepak Goel, Executive Director and Chief Business Officer, and Arvind Vishwanathan, CSO. Uday will share his perspective of business imperatives and strategic progress made by the company followed by Deepa, who will update us on the enterprise business, and Arvind will provide an overview on financials. After opening remarks, we'll be happy to engage with participants and address their questions. Before I hand it over to Uday, let me draw your attention to the fact that today's discussion may feature statements that are forward-looking in nature. All statements, other than statements of historical facts, could be deemed forward-looking in nature. Such statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty some of which cannot be predicted or quantified. A detailed disclosure in this regard is mentioned in the results presentation that is uploaded on our website. Audio recording and transcript will be available on the website soon. Now I hand it over to Uday. Uh, thank you, Ritu. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, all of you joining us today. Um, I'm joined with uh, Deepak, our Chief Business Officer, and, our, and Arvind our chief financial officer. So we have shared uh, shared uh, detailed disclosures of our results yesterday, and I'm sure all of you had an opportunity to go through the go through the same. Um, while we would be happy to take any questions on Q4 as part of a Q and A, our focus in the opening part will be to give you a very strategic update on our platform and enterprise businesses. I have been. Um, I've been talking about looking at our platform business and enterprise business very independently, and we will re and we will report a bit there for these businesses separately going forward. In my opening remarks, I would I'll give you a, a perspective on our platform business, uh, whereas Deepak would would would, would, uh, uh, would give a perspective on on uh, on the enterprise business, and whereas Arvind will share the financial um, uh, highlights. So let me talk about uh, uh, the platform business here. So we see a significant secular tailwind of uh, digital interactions in India. Um, we have seen 3x increase um, in digital interactions over the last three years, and it is accelerating. For example, the number of UPA interactions grew from 1 billion in FY18 to 86 billion in FY23. Estimates of it will touch around 430 billion in FY28. So, Tanla is strategically positioned to address its explosion in digital economy. Our strategy is to address the entire life cycle of customers, our customers' customers in digital first world. We will help enterprises acquire, transact, retain, and service their end customers through our platforms and solutions. This would require addressing multiple buying centers, be it the chief marketing officer uh, or the chief digital officer uh, who are focusing on acquiring new customers, upsell and cross-sell to the existing customers, and, and, and it always requires high ROI on the marketing spend. The CISO, the chief, um, the CISO and the chief risk officer are keen on areas like data security, data privacy, um, spam, scam, to ensure that customers are protected. Chief, uh, and whereas chief operating officer and business heads are focused on seamless transacting experiences for their customers. Um, uh, for example, the OTPs and, and the EKYC uh, e payments, etc. So, given our platforms today, when we, when we walk into any enterprise, Every CXO in that enterprise is our potential customer for us. That is our thought process. We would like to 
we would like to service each and every buying center in 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 in, uh, in an enterprise in an uh, in an any enterprise. So we expect the TAM, the total addressable market size for the space, uh, to be around five to six billion in India alone by 2027. Um, and if we add a few um, adjacent em emerging markets uh, where we started uh, making uh, uh, inroads such as Middle East and uh, South Southeast Asia, TAM that the TAM could be around 11 billion in, in, in 2027. So in this backdrop, in, the, in this backdrop, let me give you a perspective of where we are, if we are investing and what is the impact of these investments. I will start with the, uh, where we are investing in the platform business. Um, we have kind of invested, uh, we have invested over 175 crore in, in FY23 in innovations and improvements, um, which is in our platforms. And we have invested a lot of money in the talent and infrastructure. And uh, we have built a separate uh, dedicated team for our customer success team. And we are spending a lot of money on our advisory grant. So we we'll continue to invest in this space going forward. Um, but definitely uh, uh, in the coming quarters, we will, dip, uh, we will report uh, these investments um, uh, separately on a quarterly basis. So let me talk about uh, what we invested and what we built under investment, uh, sorry, under um, innovation in, uh, and improvements. So we are focusing on four segments within the digital interaction space, which covers all buying centers within, within an enterprise. Um, so uh, we call it as a wisely communicate, uh, then wisely engage, then wisely protect, and wisely experience. So when it comes to wisely communicate, the segment is all about orchestrating and delivering omnichannel, safe and encrypted uh, communication uh, to to the to to to, the, to our customers customers. So when it comes to engagement, uh, this segment works across entire customer lifecycle management, uh, be it acquisition, cross sell, upsell, and retention. This uh, this uh, this segment is mainly targeting at the chief digital officer or chief marketing officer of any enterprise. And uh, when it comes to uh, protect, wisely protect, the segment addresses the area of the, uh, areas of the data security and data privacy, spam and scam. Uh, and uh, so especially making all digital interactions safe and, 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 and complaint. So when it comes to wisely experience, so providing rich and seamless, uh, delightful customer experience in a cluster of digital economy is a, is a focus of this segment. So we have uh, six platforms across these uh, four segment, four sub segments. So our uh, and all our platforms have a specific DNA. They are built for greenfield opportunities. They are built by um, uh, they're getting this entire ecosystem together. They are built for scale. They are built with a prop proprietary technology, and they're built uh, as asset-like platform that are easy to deploy. These are deployed, these are deeply embedded in, 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 uh, 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 with our customers, and it's very hard to replace uh, our platforms. So all the platforms are built on Wisely, uh, uh, which we have been discussing for the last couple of years. So Wisely is a single platform of platforms on which every other platform is built. This provides us with a tremendous speed, agility to develop new platforms. For example, we took 15 months to build Wisely Communicate, but we took only four months to launch Wisely A2P, our anti-phishing platform. Wisely A2P is our patented platform to curve phishing and scam, and the, 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 the biggest menace that is threatening the digital economy today. It is our biggest innovation in our history. And uh, our, 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 the proof of concept um, uh, with the three large banks have been encouraging early results in parallel. We have, we have also showcased uh, the, the, the fantastic results of our sandbox deployment of ATP platform to our TRAI and other regulators. And I'm personally very confident this, the, uh, the, this Made in India for World platform will be a game changer to protect 1 billion plus users of digital economy. In addition to Wisely A2P, we have delivered 
30 plus innovations and improvements across our platforms over the past six months. We have invested in the state of art Kaizen Center to drive continuous improvement in our existing platforms by deploying best in class monitoring tools to deliver excellent customer experience once we are on, on board our platforms. So, secondly, we are investing on talent and infrastructure. Uh, we have recently invested in building a state of uh, art innovation and experience center in Hyderabad that houses around 150 of the India's top talent in cutting edge across blockchain, cryptography, and a very big focus on A and ML. Built over 100,000 square, 100, square feet area, this center is unique hub of innovation with the five garages and an environment which fuels innovation. So the third biggest um, area that we are investing is the customer success and brand. Uh, we believe customer success and uh, 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 and are slightly, uh, so sorry, significantly investing in the dedicated team from the industry to to be custodians of our business impact and delight to our, our enterprise customers. We're also making purposeful investments in building our product brand wisely to stand out the most trusted brand in digital interactions. So our, uh, our significant um, investments are delivering business and financial Im impact. Let me, let me, um, uh, let me elaborate uh, here. So when it comes to business impact, Collectively, our platforms touch more than a billion lives in India. Around 35% of our top 30, 70 customers use three out of six of our platforms. We have very high customer retention rate. Increased customer adoption is, uh, is accelerating in our platform lifecycle. Our first platform, SMSE, took five years to reach to, to 25 crores cross margin per annum. Um, our DLT platform, the True Block, reached 100 crores milestone in two years, uh, whereas Wisely Net Network, which is deployed with the uh, Vodafone ID Network, um, reached 100 crores cross margin within 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 uh, one year. And um, so, our Wisely um, OTT platform, uh, I'm sure, will reach 100 crores cross margin club uh, in less than 12 months. So. So we're pretty excited about these platforms. Um, so I, I'll, let me also talk about the financial impact of our investments. Uh, our gross profit in the platform business are, are growing 20% plus over the last 12 quarters. Our EBITDA margins are upwards of 70%. So we have delivered strong growth at high margins. The platform companies are expected to operate at the rule of 60, uh, which is revenue growth plus EBITDA margin percentage, uh, should be greater than 60%. We are operating at the levels significantly high, higher rule of uh, 60 today, but our vision is to operate at least at, uh, at the rule of 60 at a scale. In summary, we have a clear strategy that is working. I wanted to leave behind four messages for our platform business. One, we are in evergreen market with a large total addressable market. The second point, we have a track record of successful, successful innovations and cutting-edge technologies like ANML, blockchain, and cryptography. The Innovation and Experience Center is accelerating this further. The third point, we have shown massive customer adoption addressing the needs of several buying centers in an enterprise. The fourth point, our platform business demonstrate all SaaS platforms characteristics which are rule of 60, consistent, predictable growth rate, 70% plus EBITDA profile, high lifetime value for each platform. Interestingly, SaaS companies such as ServiceNow are typically valued at a PE multiple of 100 plus. So that, that is the power of platform business, and we continue to um, report um, uh, as I said earlier, uh, both platforms and enterprise business separately from this, uh, from the from from the uh, the quarter on, for this quarter onwards. With this, I would like to hand it over to Deepak, uh, who talks about enterprise business. Thanks, Uday. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, Johnny, for this call. Uh, Uday has uh, given an overview 
of the industry and our approach to the platform business. Let me give you an overview of the enterprise business. We are India's largest CPAS player with over 20 years of leadership in the communication space. Fundamentally, our business is about helping enterprises engage with their end customers across communication channels. So when a bank is sending an OTP or a notification to its customer, it goes through our platform. If an enterprise is engaging in a two-way conversation with their customer, it goes through our platform. We are behind the scenes touching over a billion people, enabling their digital journey. Our business model is pay as you go. So as the volume of communication between enterprises and their end customers grow, we grow. In fact, our business is very closely coupled with the growth of digital economy. As the digital interactions grow, we will grow. I'm very optimistic on the growth prospects of the enterprise business. Let me tell you why we are best positioned to build on our leadership in this space. Number one, scale. We have unmatched scale with over 30% enterprises market share in India. Our scale is not just reflected in volumes, but also in terms of our customer profile. We serve over 1,300 enterprises in India, eight out of top 10 brands across all industry segments, or I would say across all large industry segments from banking, insurance, retail, e-commerce, travel, digital natives, et cetera, are our customers. We are the largest partner with the government and played an active role in enabling vaccination in India by providing authentication messages for our Radio Setu app, as well as COVID app through OTPs to schedule vaccine appointments and notifications. Our scale helps us deliver large campaigns for customers at short notice and provides tremendous references for our new customer acquisition. We acquire over 200 new customers every year as enterprises are keen to work with market leaders. Number two is customer stickiness. Once we acquire customers, they continue for perpetuity. Our business is not about just providing a gateway for enterprises to the telco. It is about significant integrations coupled with 24 by 7 service requiring tremendous agility. We have built the culture of customer first and our turnaround time to meet our customer requirements is the industry benchmark. Let me give you a few examples. We have given more than 10,000 customized APIs to integrate with our customers. In certain large customers, we have done more than 100 APIs integrations across their different systems. This is a constant process and is a key requirement to scale. Our strength in banking is due to our middleware application being deployed within banks' environment. Banks today deploy multiple CRM software to provide multiple service to their customers, be it banking, loans, cards, insurance, mutual funds, and other products. To deliver notification to their customers, our middleware is connected to their multiple CRM systems. We support over 1,000 types of different use cases where customers receive omni-channel messages based on their engagement. This middleware process more than 2 billion messages per month for various banks. We are deeply integrated with all the major CRM systems across different verticals to enable enterprises send multi-channel messages to their customers. It is impossible to ramp up in any customer without these integrations. We have a huge head start and it is not easy to displace incumbents. This is reflected in the fact that more than 50 out of our top 100 accounts have been with us for more than five years. If you look at our customers' cohorts, every cohort has grown double digits CAGR from inception. New use cases. We are constantly seeing new use cases evolve in our business. UPI is a great example. As Uday mentioned, the number of UPI interactions grew from 1 billion in uh, FI18 to 86 billion in FI23. Estimates are that it will touch 420 billion mark in FY28. This provides a huge opportunity for us, and we are addressing these spends of the bank. There are a lot, lot more such opportunities. Let me give you some examples. Uh, AI ML-based solutions. For a leading bank, we help automate relevant promotional messages based on user card swipe activity. Using machine learning technology, Relevant offers are triggered to user basis, his transaction amount, location, and card type. This program has resulted in two-way increase in loyalty offers for the bank. 
we pioneered voice OTP. If the customer is in a remote location where SMS deliveries are low, we can enable a retry mechanism with a OTP getting delivered through our voice call. These, these are a few examples in terms of how traditional channels are seeing new use cases and fueling growth beyond OTP and notifications. So I'll talk about newer channels. We are seeing new channels like WhatsApp provide a big opportunity for us. These are coming out with completely new use cases and not really substituting the use cases of SMS. We have made significant investments in WhatsApp and it is reflecting in our results. We have grown our business over 3.5x from Q4 of last year to Q4 of this year and we have reached an annualized on rate of 150 crores in this business. Let me give you a couple of examples of what we are doing here. Commerce on WhatsApp. We have enabled highly personalized customer experiences via WhatsApp for our brands. These help businesses not only to differentiate themselves, but also to gain a sustainable competitive advantage. One of the use cases is leveraging a cab booking over WhatsApp. Instead of booking a cab via various cab aggregators at airport, we have worked out with an online travel company to provide a very simple user experience to book a cab to their destination from the airport. Whether it is integ integration with various care providers or Google, Google Maps or even a payment gateway, the whole journey is very seamless and liberates the user from downloading different apps for cab booking. So another example is solving one big logistics last mile delivery problem. We created a solution for a logistics player who provided a 24 by 7 process of handling shipments related queries, customer interaction complaints and other support use cases. This helped the customer in solving for real customer problems using our WhatsApp services. Customer feedback increased by 20% as the logistics player was able to identify and resolve customer pain points where shipments got undelivered. Just to tell you, we are powering State Bank of India WhatsApp banking service over WhatsApp. Now there are over 300 million customers will now be able to engage over uh, WhatsApp with SBI for all their banking requests. There's another new channel, which is RCS, uh, and we are equally engaged in RCS and taking the lead there as well and signing up customers. So in summary, we have a very solid business and well positioned to benefit from the digital interaction boom as we have all the building blocks required. FY23 has been a challenging year as the pricing environment deteriorated in the first half of the year. We are now seeing more stability as there is realization that pricing alone is not sustainable differentiation. Customers realize that having a few minutes of downtime in OTP can disrupt their business. Customer service around two-way communication is our core business and we are available 24 by 7 to solve their problems and provide new solutions. We are Constantly innovating. I do not believe one can disrupt this business on price alone. I have seen multiple cycles in the industry in the past. We have seen price increases in the industry two times in the last five years on our domestic business and around three to four times on international side. My personal experience being in the industry for over two decades is that pricing environment stabilizes after a challenging year. I'm, I'm hopeful that history will repeat itself here. As the business environment has become stable, we have seen our enterprise margins come back to 20% levels. We think the worst is behind us and we are looking at growth in FY24. That's it from my side. Thank you. And I will pass it on to Arvind. Hey, uh, thanks Deepak. Uh, Welcome everyone and thanks for joining our call. You heard Uday and Deepak give an overview on the platform and enterprise business. I would like to cover two areas from my side. A quick overview on the year gone by and the way we are looking at the enterprise and platform business going forward from a reporting standpoint. Right? We ended FI23 with revenues of over 3,350 crores and PAT of around 450 crores. We had a slow start to the year and saw a drop in profitability. But like we mentioned then, uh, over the past three quarters, we've seen a steady improvement in our profitability. Deepak alluded to it with gross margins of the enterprise business back to 20%. And overall company level EBITDA also back to 20% in Q4, 23, right? 
Uh, we generated over 200 crores of operating cash flow in Q4. I think the big takeaway for us is that we've stayed very, very disciplined in a tough environment. Right? Uh, we've not uh, we've not gone aggressive. We've, we've uh, not made mistakes. We've we've kind of remained very disciplined, and you know we stuck to our commitment to return cash to shareholders. Right? We announced a dividend policy of. 30% of consolidated PAC to be paid out as dividend every year. We announced a final dividend of uh, rupees four per share. This is on top of rupees six interim dividend that we announced in August 22. We also completed our third consecutive buyback of 170 crores. If you include the buyback pack, the total outflows over 210 crores in January of this year. So we've been returning sizable amount of cash back to shareholders. Going forward, as Uday mentioned, we have uh, two businesses, uh, enterprise and platforms. Both of these businesses are part of our CPAS market, but we will break down the financials right up to EBITDA from Q1 of FI24 on a management reporting basis so that there is better understanding of these businesses for investors and analysts. These businesses have slightly different drivers, right? So we will look at metrics across investments, business impact, and financial impact. To give you a sense for the platform business, we would share business metrics along customer adoption, customer churn, and platform segmentation. Rule of 60, as Uday kind of alluded to, would be applicable to the platform business. For the enterprise business, you continue to give new customers, breakdown, customer segmentation, and customer concentration. From a financial metric standpoint, we already give breakdown of two gross margins. We would start sharing EBITDA for the two businesses. Uh, this is one more step uh, as part of our disclosure process, right? We've been constantly adding our disclosures, and we think this would help investors understand our business better. With this, you know, I, I would request that we open the floor for Q&A. We'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Ronak Vora from AUM Fund Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, sir. Yes, Ronak. Go forward. Uh, yeah. Uh, you said that we are back on the path of growth from FY24 onwards. So, what kind of growth uh, do we expect in the enterprise and platform business separately? Deepak, do you want to give a color on the enterprise business first? So, yeah, sure. So, Ronak, as I uh, mentioned, uh, you know, the the worst is behind us, yeah, and we are seeing, uh, you know, good growth in, uh, in, in FI24, though we don't provide any forward uh, uh, looking guidance. But uh, what I can tell you is that our our uh, you know existing uh, business our existing customers they are intact they are with us they are very happy with us with our uh, uh, with our uh, solutions and with our service and they are growing apart from that uh, i mentioned in my previous uh, you know, earnings call that we have uh, embarked on a very uh, uh, aggressive uh, campaign uh, to acquire new customers and we are very focused on that and we have seen some real good results in Q4, where we have acquired more than 50 customers, which are uh, large, and uh, we are onboarding them. So overall, uh, yeah, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm very hopeful for a good growth coming in in FI24. Okay. Uh, because in the last three quarters, our, uh, even though our number of customers have increased for us, the revenue translation and the enterprise business has been hardly flattish so which is where my question comes in uh instead that we have uh, onboarded around 50 customers or in the process of onboarding 50 customers in the current quarter uh, 
so going ahead so when do uh, these 50 customers uh, translate into revenue so generally what's the whole time cycle uh, if you can just so uh, uh ronald usually it takes uh, you know about 6 uh, uh, to 8 months for customers to fully ramp up uh, their uh, volumes uh, and their transactions on on us Uh, and uh, and and this is the time frame what we are looking at but uh, we uh, we would see that you know some amount of their business would start trickling in uh, from q1 itself okay uh, and on the platform business um rona kaude here on the platform side um, as i promised you earlier like uh, we closely track uh, rule of 60 um uh, so definitely we are very conscious about uh, the growth as well as uh, uh, the the revenue growth as well as the the ebitda margins uh, as i mentioned uh, in my call um, we would uh, the, our revenue, uh, our ebitda margins on our platforms are very high uh, which is upwards of 70% so so yes uh, we, we our base is small as of today uh, when we compare uh, 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 with with the enterprise business so i think uh, since we have the six platforms um, which is, uh, which are being kind of different okay uh and uh, so even though uh, it's uh, and this one that you you are so two platforms have already reached uh, 100 crores uh, club and the third platform should be able to reach um, in the next one or two quarters uh, the remaining three platforms at least they'll be around uh, 0 to 50 crores by end of this uh, end of this year so all 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 uh, six platforms uh, 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 so so will be contributing uh, something or other uh, in this financial year okay okay thank you thank you okay. we have a next question from the line of balaji subramanian from iifl please go ahead uh good afternoon thanks for uh, uh, taking my question uh, i had two questions the first one is on where are we on the uh, consent management uh, module uh, for true block so this was something which was uh, expected to be uh, approved by the regulator and uh, any uh, progress on that the second thing is on again related to uh, tri uh, last week there was a news item that uh, tri had uh, uh called uh, telcos and discussed the issue of uh, uh, spam uh, calls especially on the voice front so you know do we see some opportunity there just like how uh, we have kind of uh, uh, moved ahead with true block for sms so baliji hi good day here so on on uh, and in terms of concern management uh, it is a regulator and it is the the telcos who has to take the call but as far as um our, our platform is concerned we have been ready for quite some time so it is up to the regulator and the telcos to decide when they want to launch so we are not the one who's going to launch right so so that's the number one number two about um, uh, the cam calls um, uh, we are busy uh, 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 deploying our uh, uh, sms uh, phishing solution as we speak um so uh first we would like to concentrate on sms phishing uh, before we really move to the voice and and uh, um if i'm allowed to say as as the voice uh, solution for uh, i mean uh, uh, voice uh, phishing is not is not that easy to uh, deploy um we don't have any benchmarking products not that we have a benchmarking product for sms phishing uh, but uh, but it's too early to comment on on voice phishing Okay, got it. Uh, uh, those were my questions. Thanks and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my uh, first question is on the enterprise business. So you mentioned that enterprise business, you know, we are going to see a uh, better growth in FY24. So now the uh, assumption for this growth is only i uh, know you know based on the reversal in volume growth and if you can break it down 
what's happening between transactional and promotional volume because i think promotional you know volume for fy23 has been has been down significantly and also are we also baking in any uh, you know price hikes in nld side or any further you know price hikes in ild you know pricing on the enterprise uh, uh, on on the on the enterprise business and secondly on the enterprise business you know margin expansion can you please provide us with the any kind of walk that you have that what led to this margin expansion and uh, you know uh, is it is it more you know is it the is it the new base or is there something that is like one of in this yeah uh, amit uh, is deepak here so uh, uh, first of all i i i spoke about uh, you know growth uh, in enterprise business so it is come it will come through two counts uh, one from existing customers and another for the new customers which we have recently acquired uh, and let me tell you the customers that we acquired they are very large uh, in size so we are very uh, hopeful uh, that uh, you know we would uh, you know uh, you know and that they would ramp up very well with us but uh, as you asked a very uh, you know a good question that how you know what will happen with promotions and transactions uh, yes i i agree uh, in last couple of quarters we have seen that banks have not been spending uh, so much what they used to do it earlier on uh, on the marketing campaigns on promotional campaigns we have seen some sort of a uh, you know uh, you know uh, that you know, some sort of a degrowth i can say on on those volumes but let me tell you our 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 focus and our uh, majority of our business is on transaction based and we have seen uh, good growth coming in on transaction side as i mentioned about uh, just about upi itself you know that itself is a use case which has been growing uh, tremendously you know and it's growing very in a big time and uh, and we are seeing overall uh, you know as as, as i said you know you, uh, banks will grow their number of transaction go up our business will also go up if uh, you know if e-commerce companies they sell more and they do more transactions you know we do more transactions so uh, so it is straight related with our you know with our customers growth and we see that you know the growth is coming because digital adoption is increasing so uh, so, so so that is that as far as uh, pricing is concerned as i mentioned uh, in last 5 years uh, we have uh, you know we were able to increase or reset the prices twice uh one it was uh, if i am right is one 2018 and then it was 2020 and uh you know uh, we have seen the work as as i have said you know uh, last year and i'm pretty sure uh you know i'm hopeful i would say that uh, you know uh, things will reset again in in near future and we would be able to see uh, uh you know uh, uh, some price hike and better margins uh and uh, to answer to your uh, last question that uh, you know uh, no it is not one off yes we are our margins have improved that is largely due to two factors one uh there is a uh, you know the overall prices have stabilized you know we are not seeing uh, that kind of a uh, you know competition basis prices because even our uh, competition and everyone has realized that you know price as i mentioned in my uh you know uh, earlier also in my statement that price is not the one through which you can actually win the customers uh you know you need to provide uh, support you need to have domain expertise you need to have uh... i'm sorry sir we are unable to hear you i think we lost uh, deepak uh the prices have stabilized and uh, and we were able to bring down uh, you know our cost as well our input cost as well uh, you know and and with these two factors we were able to you know increase our margins and uh, throughput hope i have answered your uh, questions uh, amit okay uh, uh, you know it was helpful sir and uh, you know on the platform business uh, so uday you mentioned that uh, you know the rule of 60 so currently we are operating well above that so the margins are pretty high in the platform business so you know should we assume that with scale coming in in the platform uh you know business because we have like you know four to five you know like major products which are either in incubation stage or either to you know gain scale so you know with the scale coming in uh you know the margins that we are operating at uh, the present it will come down or is it uh, fair to assume that uh, we will operate uh, you know within that uh, rule of 60 rule um, you know 
band uh, you know when we rescale uh, or uh, like in a wisely atp kind of a product if uh, it uh, if it gains scale then what margins can we assume for that so amit so basically like you know um, definitely our intent is to operate at the rule of 60 um, uh, but uh, as you, uh, as you rightly mentioned uh, uh, the uh, the scale is pretty uh, pretty small uh, as you speak but um, but i don't see any challenge even even uh, uh, when all uh, uh, six uh, platforms um, uh, go live and they start contributing like um, uh, so so the they the, they should have, they should able to operate at the rule of 60 so that's how we uh, that's how in fact uh, um, the way we work uh, in the innovation and experience center work is each uh, uh platform is is housed in one garage and it has got the dedicated team right and it has got own budgets and it's got the own road map so and everybody has mandated to operate uh at a scale and at a certain uh, kpis there so the whole team is pretty clear about what they're supposed to deliver so our intent is to deliver minimum 60 if if uh, if, if that's what you want me to commit so our intent is to operate at minimum 60 okay um and so uh, you know like one last thing so uh, you know uh, obviously the you know, platform is uh, you know the the growth drive of us but how do you see the competition evolving here because uh, you know right now uh, we are not at scale but still you know there are you know similar products being launched by the competition also so how do you see the pricing here is it more capability driven or it is more pricing driven so how, you know like we start to you know like determine the success for any product so um come it is very very good question like uh, so i would love uh, i love to clarify uh, this point so we have the some evidence here in the sense like we were the one who has de- developed and deployed a com- uh, uh, the the true block uh, with the dlt platform um which is the biggest blockchain uh, use case in the world and uh, we we won uh, minimum um, we won around 60% uh, market share consistently for the last two years right in fact we are gaining market share every quarter the the reason being we are we don't just uh, innovate and forget it we keep innovating we keep improving our platforms okay so so that's that's where our that's what our dna is like right so um we 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 in fact we don't copy anybody if somebody wants to copy us most welcome right it's not that easy and we have created created the second evidence which is a wisely communicate uh, which which we launched with microsoft um so the third evidence is wisely app so we are always ahead of the curve we always good at identifying the opportunity we are good at identifying the greenfield opportunities and um, and we could at uh, building the solution or the platforms on time uh, and uh, delivering the uh, customer Im- uh, the impact to the customers so so we have the uh, we have the evidence here so uh, so 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 i don't i don't really care about uh, 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 competition uh, and uh, we are much 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 ahead of the curve uh, uh, so so uh, so i would like to leave it there okay okay thank you and all the best for the future thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of deepak chokani an individual investor please go ahead uh hello uh, i have a couple of questions on uh, yz etp uh, first is when can we expect it to move to the next stage and uh, is is this product something which is mandatory for the banks or are they adopting it voluntarily and third is is the patent in india or abroad yeah deepak udai here so I, good question um so sorry what is your first question sorry what is the atp uh, what is the first question so when when does uh, this move from poc to the next stage so see uh, the poc we uh, we kick started on 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 uh, probably a 20, 25 days ago and uh, and uh, india's top three bank which is uh, um kotak icici and hdfc are on, are on this platform and they're extremely happy with the results 
and um, in fact, if, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we should be able to get into uh, um, uh, commercial discussions very soon. Uh, that's number one. Number two, is it uh, regulated as of today? No. Um, uh, uh, but but uh, the, 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 the problem is so big, which all of us are fully aware of it. Like, okay, whether regulation comes or not, the banks and the, all the enterprises are looking for this kind of solution. Like, okay, they have to they they have to. It is a responsibility of the board. It is a responsibility of the CX host uh, to protect their users. So so as of today, in fact, each and every bank in each and each and every enterprise has a lot of budgets. Uh, for towards uh, towards the cyber security, and they're willing to spend the money on a uh, solution like so. Um, so as long as we deliver the impact uh, to to to, uh, to the to the users uh, in terms of protecting their users, uh, I don't see any much challenge uh, commercializing this product. Um, so please allow us to update in the next uh, one one and a half months time. Um, but the problem here is only. Here is uh, it's a greenfield opportunity, this first of its kind of solution in the world. So the pricing, uh, when we have to price to our customers, so we don't have any benchmarking products like. So it takes a bit of time for us to close the deals, but once we uh, close with first one or two banks, um, that will become the benchmark for other enterprises to follow. So first one or two uh, uh, deals are very important for, for, for us. Sure, sure. And and uh, do do you think so? Q1 will 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 have some bit of it. And before I answer that, uh, uh, Deepak, like you know, let me I'll update you. Like you know, uh, recently, uh, TRAI uh, formed a uh, group of uh, as, as a formed a group where Minister of Home Affairs, Reserve Bank of India, SEBI, and all the regulators in India, including insurance regulator, came together, and they are looking for this kind of solution, like. That's where we have demonstrated our platform a month ago, uh, and they're pretty excited for the solution. So, 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 yeah, we don't see any any challenge in 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 in, uh, in um, uh, commercializing this platform. Stu, don't worry too much about uh, this quarter or next quarter. But it, as I told you earlier, this is the biggest uh, um, innovation came out of Canada in the last two decades. So, you know what what I mean by that. Oh, yeah, uh, that, that's helpful, sir. So the last question on this, uh, is, this is this patented in India or abroad? We have applied uh, in all markets, in important markets. That's how we always do, uh, including India in and, and Europe and U.S. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and 1 to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Mohit Motwani from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I had uh, uh, three questions. One is around, uh, you spoke in the last quarter about integrating some of the large banks and e-commerce companies uh, in, the, in the coming quarter. So just wanted to get a sense of where are we, are, where are we now from the, that standpoint? Have the revenues started flowing in and what's the scale of that? Yeah, so uh, Deepak here. Uh, so as I said, uh, we have, uh, you know, completed the integration with some of the very large uh, customers. And, uh, you know, it takes time because, you know, then there's a testing phase, you know, uh, which, which which usually go, go on for about 8 to 10 weeks where we get uh, some, uh, you know, percentage of, uh, you know, their business. And once that testing is complete, you know, and, and all the integrations are done, and then uh, slowly, uh, you know, volumes uh, ramp up. So, uh, so that's the you know that's the life you know uh, cycle of, of any uh, you know onboarding any customer. Uh, so we, uh, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, we would see some amount of uh, revenues coming in, in Q1, but overall uh, the you know the real impact will come uh, you know uh, maybe in about six months time. Uh, sure. And uh, can you give a sense of you know what has been the contribution from NLD and ILD? I believe uh, this was 95% uh, was NLD two years ago. And has that sh mix shifted uh, or is remains the same as of uh, FI23? You know, so I, 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 this is Arvind here. You know, we've not called out uh, in terms of uh, NLD, ILD contribution. So, uh, in, and it was. Uh, uh, so, sorry. Uh, so, in your analysis meet, actually, there was 160 billion of uh, NLD transactions and 9 billion of. Uh, yeah, we have a volume. Okay, okay. No, no. So, <laughs> the pricing is very different, right? So. 
So if you look at it, roughly about 30 odd percent of the enterprise business, one third of the enterprise business would be NLD, uh, ILD, sorry. Uh, this is volume basis, right? We are seeing. No, revenue basis. Revenue basis, okay. okay. Okay, and one more last question was, you know, uh, have you, uh, do you have you considered, you know, entering the new product category like email? And if yes, then, you know, would you be pursuing any, in, in any, any inorganic opportunity for the same or it will be more in-house? So, uh, Deepak here. Uh, so, we do provide, uh, you know, email services to a select few customers. And that is primarily for, uh, you know, transactions, let's say for uh, a uh, a couple of very large private banks, uh, they, they do send, uh, they use our uh, email services. And, uh, you know, but we are not too focused on email. We are focused on uh, newer channels, as I mentioned in my statement, uh, like WhatsApp, like Truecaller, like RCS. So these are the channels which really excite us, and we feel that, you know, we can build a lot of new cases, uh, new use cases using these channels because they provide, uh, you know, two-way communication and, you know, we can we can achieve a lot through these and they can complement to our uh, overall SMS business. Sure. And the last one, if I may squeeze in, uh, so, you know, your contribution from WhatsApp has been increasing uh, very heavily over the last year. Uh, do you see this increasing more forward and because it might be enjoying higher margins, uh, do you believe that at the company level margins, uh, WhatsApp can aid and, you know, improve it even further? Yeah, definitely. It is, uh, you know, it is more like, uh, you know, building the use cases around, uh, you know, around WhatsApp. Okay, building, uh, uh, you know, uh, some interesting user journeys, some complex user journeys, which can help, uh, you know, enterprises to, uh, you know, uh, interact with their uh, customers. And when, when we do that, we, uh, you know, we definitely make more money. Customers are happy to pay us more and happy to pay us for such solutions. And and that goes into our margins. Definitely yes. And 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 uh, FY24, we have some big plans on that. Oh, sure, that's all helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Milan Karmarkar from Dalal and Brocha PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, gentlemen. Hi, Uday. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the results were quite good, and uh, congratulations for. Uh, delivering on the 20% promise which you had given a few quarters back on the uh, on EBITDA. Uh, I had a one basic question about uh, as we increase our uh, platform business, I'm sure uh, there will be an improvement in margin. So just wanted to hear from you that uh, uh, do we have sufficient scope for growth uh, in the margin? That was my first question. My second question was on, uh, uh, you know, the use cases like the one which you, uh, which was talked about, which was a travel company using uh, the uh, cab aggregators uh, and making it easier for booking of cabs. Uh, what kind of uh, sort of commercial opportunity do you think in these type of use cases? So that was that were my two questions. Uh, 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 hi, Milan Uday here. Thank you. Hi. Um, Arjun, you want to take the first question? Then the second one goes to Sure, sure, sure. sure. I, I, I can. So, Milan, like uh, like Uday said, right, we have six yeah. platforms. Some of them have already scaled and all of them, we are confident of scaling. Right. Mm. So, from a market potential standpoint, uh, there, is, there is there is a lot of it room, right? We will mm. obviously execute and scale them up. But clearly, we are not opportunity constrained from a platform standpoint, right? Each of right. these platforms are platforms of scale, right? Mm -hmm. The timing is obviously what one is looking at, but definitely, you know, they kind of talked about it in his opening remarks. You know, one good direction is that our our scale of uh, uh, platforms gaining scale that that speed is actually accelerating, right? Which is a good positive. So, you know, from that perspective, definitely there is headroom. And obviously, once you look at it, the integrated company margin play will play out, you know. Uh, but I, we still look at these two very differently and individually, Milan. But yes, there is headroom on this, right? Okay. Maybe on the second, let me ask Deepak to give you a perspective yeah. on, on that. Uh, yeah, hi, Milan. Uh, so, uh, you, you asked for, uh, you know, how 
we uh, i think your question was how we charge our customer how we make money on such kind of solutions am i right correct that's absolutely correct yeah so uh see one so this is this comes under uh, you know our solutioning part okay mm. whatsapp is a channel which provides yeah. two way communication sms is another channel which provides maybe one way uh, you know uh, channel uh, you know one way right. communication right? right so now right. uh, we have to provide solutions on it you know so we have to sit with our customer understand their business problems and see how it can be resolved by using different channels so what i am this is how we resolve for this particular case so how we charge them we charge them for our solution when we we maybe our fee would be for for the bots what we have we have made for the user journeys and then when they, when their users start using this channels we charge them for for usage also those those are the whatsapp charges right okay so, yeah but uh, what what is what is what what is very important here is melin more than that okay is about the kind of thought leadership the kind of uh, you know experience uh, we we bring in okay mm-hmm. so so what what happens is customer start feeling you know the customer feel you know with us that these mm-hmm. are the guys who are actually solving my problems so mm-hmm. rather keep my entire business with these guys okay whether it is sms whether it is everything else let's say give you example of uh, which is a which is a real example i mean of uh, you know uh, is uh, wisely atp right mm-hmm. so atp you know we got a call from a bank mm-hmm. and which i think mentioned last uh, earnings call also and they said hey you know our users are getting scammed all the time do you yeah. have a solution and because of this what's happening is that you know uh maybe that could be one of the reason where they are thinking whether they should be sending too much of marketing messages also or no mm-hmm. because sometimes customer may feel it's a it's a phishing message right Correct. so so we you know we started working on it and we we launched wisely atp you know and we have gone to the same very bank and said uh, listen we are ready and this is the solution and they mm-hmm. and we have started the poc they are very happy with us mm-hmm. so we so once we have that kind of relationship mm-hmm. right it helps us not in just in just on our new product but helps us in our overall business also because that 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 uh, that creates immense credibility for us in front of the customer and they would right. like to be with us forever you know so this is how it works okay okay got it thank you so much and uh, gentlemen wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you we'll take thank the you. last question from the line of sambhav jain from vardhaman please go ahead Mr. Sambhav Jain. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Uday sir. Good evening, uh, Deepak sir, and uh, good evening to the CFO as well. Hey, good evening, Sambhav. Sir, my first uh, question is uh, uh, regarding our uh, basically loss in revenue in this quarter, and. Uh, just wanted to get an insight uh, about where after the whole sbi fiasco i just wanted to get an insight if we are picking up on the whatsapp channel with them and uh, how are the new customers contributing towards our uh, top line now so i'll uh, i'll take this question uh, you know uh, if you would have seen q4 is historically and from the revenue uh, point of view from the volumes uh, side is uh, is slightly weaker compared to our q3 and uh, this is what we have seen uh, you know in uh, in uh, q4 also because uh, you know q3 is full of uh, festivals a lot of festivals when happens and uh, in q4 you know the no festivals number of days are less in a quarter maybe by i mean it's, it's lower by two or three days that also impacts and uh, there are certain brands certain customers who are you know who are, who are already uh, done with their budgets you know so overall uh, we have seen the marketing side the numbers uh, are little on the on the on the lower side so all that has uh, you know impacted the revenue a little bit but uh, yeah so this is what the reason for a lower revenue in q4 uh thank you sir my second question is regarding our uh, new geography sir how what is the traction and how are you seeing uh, the response in uh, the new areas that uh, we we are uh, planning to expand or we have already started expanding like the middle east and like udaysar mentioned 
certain parts of uh, Southeast Asia as well. So just wanted to get a feeler of how things are uh, uh, shaping up for the same. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, started our operations uh, in UAE a couple of years back, uh, and uh, and now I would I would say that you know uh, the UAE is doing uh, you know uh, reasonably well for us, and we have uh, you know in FY24 we would see a good amount of revenues coming in from uh, from there for from enterprise side. But if you look at, uh, you know, we were looking for some major differentiator, and I think we got it in Wisely ATP, and uh, we participated in uh, a Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and we have uh, we we, uh, we we met regulators from UAE, we from uh, Saudi, from uh, you know a lot of other countries. We met telcos; they have shown keen interest in this product, and uh, I'm uh, you know. Uh, Pretty sure that you would see, uh, you know, uh, lot of growth coming in from there, lot of business coming in from there, rather, and we would report uh, about it in the next uh, earnings call. That's wonderful to know, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. One last uh, out of context question, sir. Uh, the day Uday, sir, I tweeted about the uh, uh, Starbucks logo and about the new innovation center. He had also casually said why uh, invited me to come down on sometime in Feb. I did write to the management, and I do live in Hyderabad, so it'd be, it would be nice to just come say hi to all of you and uh, just see all you guys in person and say hello. So whenever that happens, looking forward, sir. Sure, sure, sure. We will definitely arrange uh, the trip uh, very soon. Uh, yeah. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Ritu Mehta for closing comments. Over to you. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call today. In case any of your questions remain unanswered, you can write us to Investor Relations Team. Have a good day. Thank you. On behalf Thank of Tanla Platforms Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.